Hey, welcome back uh, to the Be Good People show. Um, Luke, we're here with uh, James Gribble. James uh, lives here in Cookville with us, and we're, we're excited to talk with him. Uh, this is the last podcast in a long series of Talking with Strangers by Malcolm Gladwell. And we started off, I can't remember the first episode we did this, but... Uh, did we mention Sandra Bland then? Yeah, we, I think we, we did. We talked about it's, it at the very beginning. It's what the whole book's about, yep. and uh, we mentioned it briefly, but we're the whole book was just unpacking all the bad things that led to that situation, and uh, we're going to talk about it today. Yeah, I mean, the, the book's the idea of, okay, how did two strangers start off their day? Mm -hmm. um, it, it ends up with a police officer making a traffic stop. How did that, does that turn into a guy losing his job and a woman committing suicide yeah. three days later in a jail? Like, how did we get there? And that's yeah. that's what Malcolm's trying to answer. Yeah. Is like, how did two seemingly str two strangers that seemingly start off their day not wanting something negative to happen mm -hmm. end up in catastrophe? Yeah. We yeah. talked about like default to truth, yep. coupling, interrogation tactics, and. Yep. Uh, that that was kind of the big three yeah, uh, yeah. That, that played a big uh, role in this this situation. But, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, maybe if you guys don't know a lot about the Sandra Bland case, what Yeah, so I mean, what happened there? So Sandra Bland, she was from Illinois. She was getting a job down, I think it was, was it Grand Prairie, um, Texas? Mm -hmm. Is that right? Um, she was Grand getting View. a Grand View, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Is that she, outside of Houston? Yep. And, and she was getting, so she was getting a job down there. And so she was down in the area, had just moved down. Um, she's driving along one day, I think leaving the school that she university, was going to be at, yeah. the university. Uh -huh. Um, she was leaving there and, uh, police officer rode up, you know, tight to her on the back of her car. Um, and, uh, so she moved over quickly. Cause it's like, if, if cops come up fast behind you, they probably want to get past you. Yeah. So she moves over. And uh, when she does, she doesn't signal. Yeah. And so the police officer, you know, throws on the blue lights, uh, pulls her over and stops. Um, and so that's kind of how the traffic st stop happened. And yeah. we have audio um, and it's in if you get the audio book. Yeah. Uh, you can actually listen to all the audio from it. Yeah. And it's it's on YouTube, too. Yeah. I and mean, you can find it pretty easily yeah. on there. Yeah. But it but it's it's basically a, a routine traffic stop that escalated very quickly. Yeah. I um, mean, it was like a matter of what, like. A minute? Yeah. You go from zero to, you know, a, a woman in jail for three days over a failure to, to signal. Yeah. And, I mean, and there, there's actually, I mean, he's he's threatening to uh, shoot tasers in, yeah. you know, if she doesn't get out of the car. Yeah, I mean, car, that's where it ends. And it's like, wait a, minute, yeah. wait a minute. She failed to signal. Yeah. Like, this is where we, this yeah, 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 yeah. But, and, and that's, I think, what brings up what Malcolm's talking about. Yeah. Is that like why did a police officer escalate like that? Was he just a bad apple? Yeah. Like was he just a a bad guy? Yeah. With a badge and a gun, or is this a bigger issue? And that's what the book talks about. Yeah. And that's where we're at now with Sandra, mm -hmm. um, and we see this case, and he he kind of he pulls it apart in details. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is and actually walks through he walks through the audio of it like okay so this is what he did here and this mm -hmm. is what he did here it's 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 very good but it, it reveals the idea that. The, the officer was attempting to escalate the situation yeah. in order to find out if there was some deeper evil happening yeah. that he couldn't see yet. Go beyond the ticket. Go beyond the ticket yeah. is what was happening. So, And incredibly relevant yeah. to where we are. Yeah, we today. started the, you know, this whole review yeah. because we were tired of talking about COVID. <laughs> and... <laughs> Here, three weeks into it, yeah. it's like, oh, this all of a sudden became relevant. Because this came out, like, in, in October of last year. This, this book, book came out in October, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. and he was saying, I'm not done talking about it because I think we still need to have a conversation. Yeah. And now the conversation has come back to bite us in the butt. Yeah. Because we haven't had it yeah. yet. That's know? how. That's kind of how he opened his book. Is yeah. Like, hey, people, stop talking about it. I'm not ready to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, I refuse. And, yeah. And he's a well-known author. So he just writes a book. Yeah, <laughs> and the and the audio version uh, has this this like uh, uh, this song that plays through yeah. of it, and it's like it's called uh, "The Hell You Talking About." Yeah, and like the very end, like and it you know it's just like mm -hmm. this this tribal chant to it, and yeah, uh, a lot of drums in it, and then near the end of it, it's like going over all these black people yeah. who have died in and it's police using, custody it's using and they're saying protest say chance. their name yeah. yeah you know and, say his name say your name yeah and yeah. that's that's like the thing that's huge right now is yeah. you know we recognize these people these are people the system has failed but realize that 
the system has failed people. Like these people are no longer breathing because the, we've we've got a bad system. Yeah. You know. And I think that that idea of say your name, say his name. Mm-hmm. What what I like about that is, you know, a lot of people got on, you know, hashtag George Floyd, and they're like, don't turn him into just a hashtag. No, yeah. the idea is that his name's in front of you. He's not just a random person statistic on a mm-hmm. sheet. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's a person with a name. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah, and. and uh, yeah, uh, I was actually about to. No, yeah. we're talking about Sandra Bland, Sorry. but I was about to go to George Floyd because yeah. uh, um, that that say his name. Mm-hmm. Uh, you you're saying that uh, you know this this uh, it, it 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 humanizes yeah. them in some way. It tells it says uh, let's 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 recognize their lives. Let's mm-hmm. let's be aware yeah. of who they were. Um, and I've seen some reaction to the use of uh, hashtags um, because this individual person whose name has been hashtagged was quote no angel yeah and um and what's interesting to me is that like the 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 other chant is black lives matter yeah which is to say um that that person's life matters they should be alive they have a right to be alive they have a right to due process before we take their life they have a right to not have us take their life but that's another conversation Yeah. Yeah. yeah so um like when you say hashtag George Floyd, Mm -hmm. like, to me, like, that's, that says, um, regardless of what you think about this guy, let's sit here for a second and recognize that this was a human being who lived and died and didn't have to. Yeah, exactly. It's like a virtual vigil almost, you know? Yeah, yeah, And that was the, uh, I don't know if you saw the the new Dave Chappelle special that came yes. out. It was very raw. I watched it last night, actually. It, it was, he said at one point, uh, they're like, you know, don't make him a hero. He was no hero. He was no angel. Why did you pick him as a hero? He's like, we didn't pick him. You did. Yeah. Like, you killed him in front of our eyes. And yeah. and he called for his mom as he's mm-hmm. suffocating. Or uh, not suffocating, but, you know, it was the lack yeah. of brain or uh, blood to the brain. Yeah. And, like, we're, you've got a country lashing out. Like, how? what did he say? Uh how can you not expect the wrath of God at that point? Yeah. And it's, it's, you know, it's people who know, uh, and I hate to bring like politics into this, but they were, uh, Biden was saying in, in one press conference that, uh, the civil rights happened, uh, so aggressively when it did was because we finally had video mm-hmm. of like what was going on in Alabama and you had a bunch of people up North going, we didn't know that was happening. And then you see the George Floyd thing happen and you've got a population that's saying, well, yeah, this is every day. Like, this isn't shocking. Like, this happens all the time. And you've got a greater population saying, we didn't know this was happening. So you've yeah. got, like, a whole lot of people speaking out against it. Yeah. Every, every major um, advance in civil rights has come with an advance in communications technology. Um, so mm-hmm. we, we got the, uh, I mean, the, the civil rights movement, in, in my opinion, um, started when, like, the blood of Abel cried out from the ground, yeah, yeah, but yeah. Yeah. you know, uh, we you know we've got like one beginning of a of a leg of that movement when Emmett Till's uh, swollen face was on the cover of newspapers, yeah. Yeah. and then like another leg of that movement kicked off when um, people were beaten on, in the in, in the streets of Selma yeah. on yeah. live television, yeah. Yeah. and another yeah. leg, and then like we move on, and then we get. Um, you know, we get Michael Brown, yep. we get Sandra Bland, yeah. we get George, Fl- and so like all of all of these, um, you know, just like Dave said, um, you know, we like it, it wasn't like the black community got together and was like, okay, so like who are we going to venerate? Ooh, yeah. Emmett, I like Emmett. Let's yeah. do that one. Yeah. No, yeah. like his mama was like, y'all aren't going to look away from what just happened, yeah. and nobody could look away, and yeah. so like we know Emmett Till's name. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, that's. Uh, you talked about uh, Michael Brown, and that was uh, with a lot of the, the protests we're seeing. It's it's that it's not just that you know the people who are responsible for that came to justice. Like that's not enough. They're saying, hey, we're tired of being policed this way. Yeah. Like th- there's an issue, and we need to fix that. And it's not just hey, one bad apple goes to jail. It's we need to restructure our training a little bit, or we yeah. need to figure out how we're serving justice to the community. Are we like? Are we treating them as the enemy, or are we there to protect the community and and just make sure it's safe, rather than the go beyond the ticket to find the boogeyman that's not there, yeah. you know? And 
I, yeah, I don't know. Uh, Dora McKesson says, uh, you know, uh, justice isn't the man who killed George Floyd or Sandra Bland or Emmett Till going to jail. Mm-hmm. Uh, justice is no more dead George Floyd, yeah. Yeah. Sandra Bland, and Emmett Till. It's like, like the, it's is a it living, breathing. Breonna Taylor, was that the one in Kentucky, yeah. Louisville? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they, they just did a, a no-knock ban yeah. and called it the Breonna Taylor uh, law. And they're like, but... People who killed her are still not out. So it's like, <laughs> and that's the second part of it. Yeah, it's like uh, it's got to be both We do the of those second things. part of it, but we don't do the first part of it. Yeah, like the most important part. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. Well, um, I think um, when you were talking about that, I was think I was thinking of the Sandra Bland story. Yeah, and I was thinking of um, what we talked about last week with policing tactics. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we talked about the Kansas City. Um, did we talk experiments? About that? Yeah, yeah, we yeah. talked about that last the, week. Both of them. Yeah, because yeah, there was a good one and a bad a one. Good one and a bad one. <laughs> but we talked about that aggressive policing, you know, and that's what we see with Sandra Bland. We see it actually. The the story starts with her running a stop sign, rolling a stop sign. Didn't fully stop at a stop sign. In in the the on campus though. On the campus. On campus. Which I've been guilty of multiple times. Yeah. Yeah. At, at night when there's no one in the parking lot and yeah. I just have to drive to the university the, like Tennessee Tech the speed limit at Tennessee Tech is three miles an hour I think I don't know um, I think it is <laughs> I don't have so, yeah <laughs> so I'm always speeding yeah that's right if I'm on Tech's campus I am speeding yeah. like there's not my car won't go that slow yeah yeah you know yeah. Um, so but yeah she rolls a stop sign um, and uh, the officer sees it but he has no authority so mm-hmm. he can't pull her over for that because yeah. he's not a campus cop yeah and so he so he actually runs up uh, he's doing the interview and he's talking with the kind of an after you know the deposition, report, yeah, the yeah. deposition. Mm-hmm. and he's like yeah well i ran up on her quickly you know and basically got her to well she knew make, that she yeah. rec- like that's why she was so mad when yeah. he pulled her over because she pulled over in good he faith instigated yeah the the only bad thing that she did that he had authority to stop her for he instigated yeah it. she didn't flip a switch he caused it. to get out of the way of a speeding and we talked yeah. about policing being this issue and so as we look at and honestly, we just talked about this. I was about to say you you had off camera. You said it like really well before I, we started. I, I don't remember what I said. You, but. S- you said that we had uh, you know a, a policing problem. Oh, yeah. that is manifesting itself in one of a re- it, in a very weak area, which is race relations. Race relations. Yeah. So and, I mean, that's, that's what it is. But it's, it, is and, it? That's a pretty good point. And I think it sheds light on both issues. Yeah. But but the policing problem is showing its light through a weak area of our society. Yeah. And that's, you know, and honestly, it'll probably, it, it likely shows in other areas too. It ha- mm-hmm. it happens in uh, white collar crime. Mm-hmm. Every time there's a Bernie Madoff, yeah. wait, something's wrong, guys. We need to police this better. You're yeah. not policing this right. You know what I mean? Like, oh, well, yeah. it shows the weakness there. Yeah. And it's it's time we, we look at the signs and mm-hmm. do something about it. Yeah. And we were talking about this off camera, and I'm like, you know, you, you, you had mentioned in YouTube as you're watching We videos, said last episode, yeah. yeah. I mean, like. 2012, 2016. Yeah. I don't know what year it is, yeah. but we're still having this conversation. Well, we're not having this conversation. Not. Like yeah. we've got people, we talk about it. For we've a got news talk cycle. shows saying, "Hey, this is an issue we should talk about and address." And they're like, yeah. "Well, we threw these guys in jail. It should be fine now." Yeah. It's like, well, <laughs> but, but we we have, like not, we have not yet seen anything roll out that actually changes how we're right. poli- how we're policing has not changed since Michael Brown. Nothing's no. changed in how we're policing since yeah. Michael Brown. There's a little give here and there, yeah. but systematically but it's still it's kind not changing. Of, so yeah. it's time, you know, the, the chance out there right now to defund the police. And I, again, I had mentioned yeah. when we talked, I don't think <laughs> that. Well, that, you said, I don't know much about it, but it sounds like a bad yeah. slogan. It's what you like said. a bad slogan. Yeah. <laughs> and, but I do, I do like the fact that it exists. I yeah. do like the fact that we're saying the action. No, this is what we need to do now. Well, it's not, a real solution, not just pandering yeah. and punditry. Yeah. It's it's like, hey, in these big city budgets, one office of like community support is getting ninety percent of yeah. the budget, and then the other five or six gets to split. You know, the ten or fifteen, whatever is left mm-hmm. over. And it's like, okay, so we've got a mental health issue, we've got a homeless issue, we've got a poverty issue, yeah. and we're expecting these other six to handle that with with limited resources when we have a lot to hand out i think new york city was planning a planning a one billion dollar budget decrease for their police force that's a billion dollars yeah. decrease and there's they, more than that they weren't you know? cutting all of it yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. like yeah. we're not abolishing the police but we're gonna cut them by a billion dollars like okay you've got a homeless problem yeah you've got a mental 
problem. Like our but they, mental but they, institutions they, they, are. We've been living under this in rags. guys that uh, an armed police force is what fixes mental illness. It's what fixes okay. homelessness. Well, how did we get there? Yeah. So this is this is this is interesting here because um, I want to connect these two things. One, um, Sandra Bland, the officer there, um, he uh, essentially caused mm -hmm. the offense. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you know, there's there's something to be said for you know Sandra didn't turn on her turning signal. She knows the law. Yeah. You know whatever. But <laughs> um, <laughs> but when a, when an officer speeds up behind you, he wants you to go over. and yeah. you get over. Yeah. And and she did. And and so her frustration was you caused this and now I'm being punished for it. Um, and and so like let's hold that in the back of our mind for a second. Um, and then step over to New York City mm. where, um, because like my vision for uh, the police is, is really the same as my vision for the military. Mm -hmm. Like I don't actually believe in, in abolition. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I don't believe in defunding either. I, I think they need more funding, mm -hmm. um, just not looking anything like the way they look now. Yeah. Um, you, you might think if you saw what I would do to the police and to the military mm -hmm. that I abolish them. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but, yeah, uh, yeah. but you know, we have, uh, New York City has, you know, you were talking, New York, New York City has uh, the largest uh, standing army in the world. Yeah. Um, you know. For like a city? Or, yeah, well, I mean, for, compared not like, to other, uh, you mean like. Like, um, I believe they're, I believe they're the, they're the fifth, oh, fifth. I think it's the okay. fifth largest standing army for any uh, territory in the world. Um, and so, um, like, that, that, that police force has the capacity mm -hmm. to radically reshape um, the way that city looks. We have the personnel, we have the money, we have the resources, we can do it. Right. It's just we're putting it into the wrong thing. Yeah. Um, and, then, and then you look at our, our military. Our military, um, we have the ability to go into, um, you know, country A and just build schools yeah. and train teachers. Yeah. We can do it all day long. Right. Um, but instead, we sit back and we wait till um, the kids grow up and, and the mines close down <clears throat> and they don't have any jobs and they resort to piracy and then there's a civil war and then we spend all of those resources yeah. trying to yeah. quell that. I think it was and Eisenhower who was like, every bomb dropped is a school that didn't get built. Yeah, yeah. And that's true here and we're still building, like we're building, we're building, we've got stuff on the line now that are gonna be outdated by the time they get to the end of the line. Right, you know? yeah. And, they, and th these are like schools that could have been built. And in a world where, well in a country where we still have asbestos in rural county schools, like, I think we've got the budget for the federal government to step yeah. in a little bit and and help rebuild these infrastructures. So, the I, I hear all the time is like, well, where's this money going to come from? It most of it's in the military, yeah, and it's going to stuff that's going to be outdated. It's going to be in a landfill in five years, yeah. you know. And uh, we're, we're talking about you know helping other countries, and, and we're starving ourselves in yeah. a lot of these instances. So like, so so when we talk about homelessness in New York, for instance. Yeah. Um, like, not only do we have the resources to deal with that situation in uh, a, a much better way than what we're doing, um, but if we step back a little bit, going back to Sandra Bland, if we step back a little bit, we realize that a lot of the ways that we're dealing with it are causing some of the problems. Yeah. Like, how many of those homeless people are homeless because they lost their job because they went to jail over yeah. a marijuana yeah. charge yeah. Yeah. or yeah. whatever yeah. you know like and and which is you know legal across the border in this state yeah, yeah. and so yeah. Exactly. like we are running up on people causing them to become homeless yeah. mm -hmm. and then our response is to send a, a, a military force in to deal with yeah. it and instead of from the very beginning stepping back and saying you know what maybe um, this body, this largest yeah. um, army in, in our yeah. country, uh, mm -hmm. like maybe like they could be a force for reshaping our, our the way our city is structured mm -hmm. and 
um, and dealing with poverty and homelessness and drug use and domestic violence in a more right. compassionate way. Yeah, reshaping, yeah, instead of just throwing them in a hole and yeah. getting them out, you know, like we're, we're treating people who can learn and who can be rehabilitated as if they're lost causes from the get-go. You yeah. know, a lot of these laws are like, you know, the, the, the three strike, you know, on nonviolent crime, people are spending their lives in jail, the rest of their lives in jail over nonviolent yeah. crimes. Like they're not a danger to society, yeah. but because they're they're doing some stuff that it, that is a lot like Sandra Plan didn't put anyone in danger by failing right. to say exactly. You know, like w- are are we creating laws to enact justice in our our society, or are we just making laws that people can break so that we can throw them away? You know, what yeah. what what is the law for? Uh, uh, you know, we talk about this with. There's there's a, a, a Christianity side to the show sometimes because yeah. we are Christians and we want to talk about like secular stuff as well. But mm-hmm. you know, when you look at like what Jesus came and to fulfill the law, like the law wasn't created so that you had stuff to follow. It was <laughs> there was a, a restoration that needed yeah. to be yeah. made yeah. in order to restore that 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 connection that was lost, uh, you know, early on. And it was it uh, Jesus's message is so simple and so pure that it's hard to digest and 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 to take it from you know, uh, what's happening with, uh, you know, him talking with the, his Pharisees and implying it to, like, the Black Lives Matter movement or to any other yeah. uh, n- needy uh, movement, uh, an oppressed minority yep. that does not have the voting power. to th- They need that, that love. And it's, it's, it's just so obvious to me that I, I think I get a little frustrated when I, when I see the lack of that understanding. But I, I know that... I don't know. I, yeah. I think I just maybe I'm focusing too uh, too much on one little thing of it, but it it just yeah. seems like the fr- from the Christian Christian side, like I feel like uh, as a Christian, like I, yeah. I've got to connect this with Jesus and that fulfillment of the law, which is to love God and to love people like you would love God. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, yeah. So. Um, as, as, a, as an American, as well, um, our founding document lays out the theory of America. Yeah. Uh, and, and it says that every single person, by virtue of their birth, mm-hmm. has the right to life, freedom, and happiness. Yeah. And, and it says that governments are instituted among men for the purpose yeah. of securing yeah. these rights. Yeah. yeah. And that any time a government... Uh, fails in that endeavor Mm -hmm. it the people have uh, he he first says the right and then later he says the duty yeah yeah to change that governance in whatever way yeah they deem will 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 Mm -hmm. best affect their safety and happiness and so like when we when we drill down and say okay so what's the point like what what are we trying to get at at the the end of the day Um, you know these laws aren't just here for the law's sake they're here ultimately to affect our safety and happiness. To those and three if, things, yeah. if they don't do that, then they're useless. They're a bad law. They're yeah. a bad law. Yeah, we need to get rid of them. Yeah. Could, that was the, the whole FDR motive is like, let's throw all this stuff on the wall, see what works to get us out of this slum. And if it didn't work, let's cut it. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't work. It doesn't benefit. So it doesn't need to be here. And we've got. <laughs> and like we understand that when it comes to yeah. like uh, the Lord of the Sabbath and like they're hungry. They can pick a few pieces of grain and eat yeah. it. Like yeah. who cares? Yeah. Like the whole point of the law was so people wouldn't be hungry. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we get that. Yeah. But but somehow when like a thousand U.S. citizens, a th- not even a U.S. citizens, a thousand people in the United States of America are killed by our own government every single year, yeah. year after year after yeah. year after year. Yeah. We don't see that ultimately our government is failing to affect our safety and happiness. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Brianna Taylor, or not Brianna Taylor? I'm sorry, Sandra Bland. That's Sandra Bland. I don't want to mean like. <laughs> There's yeah. too many of them to keep up with. Yeah, there's, there's so many names. You're saying thousand and thousand, and that's what, I, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, it's like, a thousand yeah, and of course, yeah, yeah. people are tired of the hashtags because we can't keep up with all of yeah, them, you yeah. know? But, yeah. like, with the Sandra Bland case, like, she ended up committing suicide in jail um, mm-hmm. and spent three days in there over a failure to signal. Like, at what point did someone higher up say, 
maybe we just let her go. Like, yeah. Maybe this isn't. Well, and uh, that was maybe she's not a danger to the public. That was a little bit of coupling. Um, yeah. It happened on a weekend, um, so they couldn't get since she was taken into custody, she couldn't get excused by a judge until they were back in session. Um, and so, you know what I mean? Like, wow. had this happened on a Tuesday, she'd have been out. She'd have been out. And then she was arrested for resisting arrest. Oh, for yeah. resisting arrest. Yeah. Resisting yeah. Arrest. Yeah. I think at one point Can't she arrest had... on failure to signal. Now, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. So, if you... Uh, if at one you, point she was if, told if to a police put officer the runs up, If a police officer runs up on the back, back of your car, causing <laughs> you to have an infraction, and then that police officer can then pull you over. And <laughs> while that police officer is talking to you, if he can escalate the situation high enough for you to respond negatively to him, he can tell you to get out of your car, which yeah. causes you to be even more upset. Yeah. And not comply. Well, that's my point. Is she didn't have he to spend the weekend there problem. because she failed to mm-hmm. use mm-hmm. her turn signal. But every step of the exchange, yeah. the police officer mm-hmm. caused the problem yeah. that escalated every single task to yeah. where all of a sudden resisting arrest yeah. was where we were at. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it was just it was a guy who was bad at his job, and it ended up with. But let's talk. Let's talk about a bigger scene now, okay? Mm-hmm. George Floyd. On the streets of Minneapolis, right, mm-hmm. uh, is murdered by a police officer in front of everyone. Yeah. Multiple police officers involved in it. Four. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then uh, we are we are we are lucky in America is is what we're saying that we have the money to outfit our police officers with the proper gear mm-hmm. to confront any any trouble. Mm-hmm. So riot shields, all that stuff. And so in Minneapolis, they ended up having to pull out their riot shields later that week. Because a police officer caused a situation <laughs> that created a riot. Yeah. I mean, isn't yeah. that a little bit like self-determining? You yeah. know what I mean? At a certain point, it's like you're preparing for your own failure. Yeah. Yes. I just, that, that frustrates me so much because all this stuff, we're, I, boy, I'm glad the police have tear gas. So, you know what I mean? Dude. I'm sure I'm glad they have tear gas. Yeah. Oh, they wouldn't have had to use it if they wouldn't have murdered someone. Right. But, yeah. well, but yeah. I'm glad that they have it. Yeah. I just, Are you guys Five Iron Frenzy fans? <laughs> I remember Five Iron Frenzy. Yeah. yeah. They had a song. <laughs> You're dating yourself there, man. I didn't... Oh, oh, wait, I'm going to go back. Right. They, had a, they had a song um, on uh, Quantity is Job Number One, yeah. uh, which is uh, the third best Five on Frenzy album. Okay. And um, yeah. and uh, the, the song is called uh, Go and Get Your Riot Gear. And it's about um, a uh, riot in, in uh, was it Denver, uh, where after a, a Super Bowl or something like that. Yeah. And... and um, and it's and it's basically it's like uh, you know the the pre the pre course says uh, you want riots wear your riot gear you want violence we'll shoot some tear gas in the air hmm. and um, and and it's basically it's saying like you you walked up to this situation yep. with shields shooting tear gas yelling at people through through megaphones and and you don't expect an, an angry response yeah. Um, but- but that's that's the thing. They were responding the same way. Um, the I don't even remember his the police officer's name, which is good. I'm glad. <laughs> yeah. I'm actually kind of happy about that. Yeah. But the police officer with George Floyd. I, yeah, I don't Shaman. Remember. Yeah. Okay. The we're making the in response to those riots in Minneapolis. We are doing the same playbook. Yes. That he did on the streets yeah. with George Floyd. That ended that way. We we clearly didn't learn anything even that week. Yeah. Even the, even though we make announcements and we mm-hmm. we say you know we fire him and everything, you didn't change your actions. You still yeah. showed well, up. That's, with that's why they're still out there. Is because it, it's like the Ferguson thing. It's we're yeah. tired of being policed this way. Yes, yeah. we want the system to change. It's like, well, we put the guy in jail. What more do you want? <laughs> we want more. Yeah. <laughs> like we yeah. we yeah. want equal treatment. We want yeah. the police to treat us here like a uh, sheriff in you know some rural Tennessee yeah. county to ha- treats their people like we want accountability was we it, want was it the national guard in nashville that uh was uh, on a back line they laid down the riot shields and made for a yeah. great photo opportunity yeah. yeah what would have made for a better photo opportunity was them putting them in a dumpster yeah that's yeah. the better yeah. story that's yeah. that's the actual change yeah if you set it down for a photo that's great i mean i understand the heart of those individuals yeah. that were there was probably great yeah but they picked them back up yeah and mm-hmm. they put them back in a cabinet where they can pull them out again yeah, yeah. That's the problem. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Ferguson is an interesting uh, case study here too, because uh, what happened in Ferguson it didn't start with a protest. Um, so first, uh, B- Michael Brown is, is shot. He's um, ign- ignoring everything that happened before. He's shot. Yeah. Um, he, he's he's shot. He's dead. He's on the ground in the streets. 
And there's people saying, like, you're leaving his body there, cover up his body. His mom shows up and is like, let me go see my son, or at least just cover up his body or do something. So for four hours, uh, this anger and tension is building. Um, And then um, once, um, you know, the investigators finally show up and they they deal with with the scene itself, um, then uh, people there and and the, the, the neighbors there, like, this wasn't, you know, they weren't bussing people in from from Baltimore yeah. here. Like this is this is yeah. the neighbors um, were were still out there, yeah. and were still talking about this. And and of course there's officers still out there, and and there's still there's there's more there's still anger, and um, that goes through one night. Mm-hmm. The next day, more officers show up uh, as sort of crowd control. They're in there. They're you know they're in the blues. Yeah. They're not. Is no yeah. shields, helmets, yeah. things like yeah. that, um, and more neighbors come out to essentially say, like, go away. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that night, there was a candlelight vigil, mm-hmm. and um, more officers show up to that candlelight vigil, and they have dogs, and. So it sounds like what could have happened from the beginning was to just move the body just, to a respectful place, you know, like get him off the ground. You know, if if they if, if it had been, we've done our investigation. We moved the body. Coroner's here. They've she they, they they've done all everything they got to do. You know, we're out. Yeah. Then people would have had their candlelight vigil, mm-hmm. and maybe there would have been protests. I don't know. Yeah. Um. But what didn't have to happen is the third night. Right. The third day, it wasn't even night yet, yeah. showing up with the armored truck. Right. With the machine gun mounted on top. <laughs> like, that didn't have to happen. Yeah. And so, like, every, at every step of that, like, it didn't start with protests. Um, that's, that night was the night the protests started. Yeah. Was, the, was when they showed up with the, with the armor yeah. and people said, no, this is just too much. Yeah. Like, but un- up until then, it was... Um, an angry community acknowledging their neighbor mm-hmm. who had been yeah. killed. Yeah. And, um, and then the protests started. And then people said, you know what? This is it. Last draw. We're done. Yeah. And There's no, like, goodwill social constru- or, uh, contract there. It's, yeah. it's you brought a gun to a yes. verbal debate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I, I end up on the wrong end of a lot of uh, arguments. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> but I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say, if you think an up armored vehicle with a 50 cal on top of it is good policing, you you're you don't know what you're talking about. That's a bold statement. I'm I'm just gonna, <laughs> that's not that's like, not crowd control. That's war. That's not, yeah. you're not serving or protecting it. Like well, that who was are, who are you protecting from the Sanders Yourself? land? Like the issue at the root of it is escalation, yes. or there should be de- de-escalation. Yes. Yeah, Did exactly. any of those people in Ferguson have an armored? truck with a 50 cal <laughs> mounted on the top no no well, then no that was escalation. a lot of them didn't have cars <laughs> like, that was, yeah i mean like yeah like yeah, yeah. half these guys are bussing it to work working yeah. 50 hours a week to support you know their their kids in, in an impoverished neighborhood and bringing dogs on this stuff? bringing a dog to yeah. a candlelight vi- bring, bring dogs not a dog bringing dogs to a candlelight vigil like that is i'll not... tell you what if you if you bring men with riot shields People are going to throw rocks at the riot shields. Yeah. If you don't have a riot shield, they're probably not going to throw a rock at you. Yeah. I mean, that's, you know what no. I mean? Like, don't, that escalates. There everyone's. is civility that can be had. Yes. And it's when you come to it to, like, de-escalate. And it's like you said, uh, you know, our advanced in, our advance in, you know, visual communication is is just exposing stuff. It's not creating yeah. a problem. It's just yes. exposing yeah. it. And yeah. it's, it's, it's got to be on the rest of us seeing it to say... I'm gonna be uncomfortable in this. Uh, I forget what the type of philosophy it's called, but it, it's the concept is that I'm gonna make you uncomfortable, and in turn, I'm gonna be uncomfortable, and we're gonna learn something out of yeah. this. And these videos are happening. You know, it, it's not something made up. It's not a show. This should make you uncomfortable. You yeah. should be uncomfortable from this. Let's learn something. Let's build something better from this. Well, and if escalation's wrong and de-escalation is the right way, what does that look like? Does that look like um, – right now it's kind of one size fits all. Mm-hmm. If there's a 911 call for any type, of ex- any type of reason and police are dispatched to it, we get some guy showing up 
with Batman's utility belt on with four methods of killing yeah. someone on And his let's belt. not bag everything on the police. No. Like, put, no, I, I know what you're saying, yeah. but like, how can one person be trained to do six different departments yeah. works? You know, yeah. like, why are we asking that yes. of these people? Why aren't we funding these other departments? So, so a defund that, the police is also, let's, let's use those funds somewhere else. Let's hire more social that workers. Let's hire more, of them. Psych- you know, emergency yeah. psychiatrists or, or whatever you call it. Uh, uh, like let's let's invest in the community rather than just let's subdue dissent with force. You yeah. know that just seems, duh. You know. Yeah. I, yeah. 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 Uh, so or if you know if I again if I have my magic wand, yeah. let's hire. Um, I wish you nurses. had a magic wand. I wish I had a magic wand. wand. Uh, let's hire yeah. nurses and social workers and um, like let the, let's hire these people as police mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to answer those calls um, and b- because I, I'm a you know I'm a socialist I'm a fan of government yeah. I like government I like yeah. I like this I like sis- I don't like the system but mm-hmm. systems are cool um, yep. and so like let's let's build this system in such a way that we have those tools in place um, and uh, you know and that before we had uh, municipal police, which is like, we ten thousand years we've had society, like we've had social order, mm-hmm. yep. and um, like two hundred of those we've had police, mm-hmm. um, and, and before that we had the the constable, the sheriff, yeah, right. um, and and their jobs and their deputies' jobs were varied yeah. and still are. Yeah. The, the the coroner is under the sheriff's office. Right. The yeah. you know like and so our police force. I think should look more like that, where you have professionals in these various areas that can respond. Yeah. Or maybe we defund the police and we put the money into where it already, where we yeah. already have that, yeah. into yeah. social services and child welfare and, and buff you know. those systems. Yeah. That money. yeah, yeah. And we've talked about, and I, I yeah, I don't want to leave without uh, talking about this part too. Is that it seems like, and we've talked about this privately a few times, and we talked about it earlier, was uh, a lot of these issues seem to be like. I'm from a rural uh, community uh, from Tennessee, and we knew the sheriff. You know, every kid knew who the sheriff. He was usually in the school once a week or something just to be familiar with the community. He was from the community, was hired into it. Uh, And and a lot of these places, like my community, doesn't have a police force, like a city police force. We weren't even really a city. We just had a sheriff that covered four or five different cities for the county. But... He was in the community. A lot of these issues are coming from like cops that are not from the community. Like in in our our town, I, you know. And I I've got you know my uh, privileged view where I don't see a lot of these issues in Cookville. I'm sure that there are some. And but for, from the most part, like I see good things from from our place. But like especially in like Ventress County, like yep. if something bad like George Floyd happened, like you knew where the sheriff lived, you know, like yeah. he, he knew that like there's a social con- uh, uh, contract where I do the best job I can and keep order and serve justice. And I don't have rioters outside my house every night, yeah. you know, because yeah. like, it's, it's just that we respect you to do your job. We trust you to do it. And that's just yeah. how it goes. He's not anonymous, but like a lot of these guys in these cities are, Bussing into well, not bussing into work, but yeah. they're like they're, they're commuting driving, in yeah. from the suburbs or from outside. And they, yeah. it, it's only natural to be put in that position and to see the population as your enemy, or at least okay. you a dog and them a sheep to, to be herded is, around. But this isn't what you're saying is uh, maybe communities should police themselves as opposed to outside or, high, or at least hire cops. Like yeah. you know, you have to if you want to be a mayor of a town, you have to live in it. Yeah, like, yeah, for sure. It's kind of why? Because you want the best, like your interests yeah. align with the communities, yeah. you know, like I don't want new taxes here this or I want fair thinking. taxes. When Rome conquered most of the world, mm-hmm. they realized they were better off putting in, letting a local government handle their own stuff right. than being an occupying force yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. because people were more likely to be involved with their own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're dealing way. with your at least third cousin or, you know, <laughs> you know your third cousin knows this guy if you're yeah. showing up to his house, you know, so. Yeah. I think yeah. that's a big part of it too that isn't really the focus nor should it, you know it's one of those back burner things but I, 
Well, and okay. I, I thought it was interesting too, like where you're from. I lived, you uh-huh. know, in, in yeah. Fentress County, and uh, 127 there, going from Jamestown to Clark Range. Mm-hmm. All right, it's a big four lane <laughs> highway that you can drive very quickly on. <laughs> and I did. I used to drive. I did a lot. Yeah. So I had I had, a, I had a buddy. There were a few mine. races. I didn't look at it. I, did. <laughs> yeah. I, I had a buddy of mine. Uh, I had a buddy of mine riding along with me. He's my yeah. father-in-law. He was with me. All, you know, he's lived there forever. He drives a tow truck. He's buddies yeah. with all the police, all the sheriff's. Yeah. Spot. He knows everybody. All right. He's riding with me. I'm speeding. Um, and, I, and I hit my brakes quick because I see a cop car, yeah. you know, coming the other way. He goes, oh, no, you're good. That's the sheriff's department. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, I didn't understand what he meant because I wasn't from there. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I was like, oh, what? oh he's like, yeah. no, sheriff's department will pull you over. They don't care if you're speeding. Yeah. That's yeah. not their job. Yeah. 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 Their job is, you know, they, they work, and he didn't really go into it, but he just said that's not their job. They don't, they don't pull people over. Yeah. You're looking for state troopers, and you're looking for yeah. local yeah. city police when you're in Jamestown. Right. He said those are the ones that are going to pull you over, yeah. you know. exactly. And so he explained it to me. But really, if we think about it, the, the, like the sheriff's department is like this. They, they actually work on behalf of the court for things. You yeah. Know what I mean? Like they, they're doing these things where they're not, they're not doing routine traffic stops right. yeah. to agitate someone to the point where they can find something wrong. You know yeah. what I mean? And the sheriff's department seems to be working pretty well. Yeah. You know what we have? Crazy concept that has lasted for yes, exactly. thousands of years. <laughs> exactly. We're seeing it in these more modern police forces yeah. that we have. Yeah. yeah. We'll see. I, there's a lot of big, like you're from the Minneapolis or mm-hmm. the uh, surrounding area. I and went they, to school in Elliott Park. I mean, yeah. that's where my college was. I mean, I mean I, they I, just right voted to two blocks away. completely dismantle their police force. And yeah. I, I think there's going to be a a lot of new ideas come from all this. And I think that like in it, we can be a little or show a little humility and, and realizing that like, Hey, to get out of a deep problem, we need some new ideas and let's give them a try rather than just this sunk cost fallacy where we're already this deep in it. This is how we've always done it. It's how my grandpa did it. So (laughs) we just have to keep trucking. And I don't want to be a pessimist on what's happening with Minneapolis police, but yeah. Um, the city of Minneapolis has a police force, and they voted to do that. Mm-hmm. But South St. Paul didn't. Mm-hmm. St. Paul yeah. didn't. Yeah. Yeah. Roseville didn't. Yeah. Eden Prairie didn't. Yeah. And that's the metro area right there. Mm. And so if they don't see a widespread change, yeah. it's not going to be a lasting change. This mm. is going to have to be a bigger mandate than cities upending their... And I, I'm not a socialist. Um, <laughs> I would be the other side of that. Um, and, and, and so it takes a lot for me to say this, but it's going to have to be a bolder federal or full state move. Yeah, yeah, I would yeah. prefer state, please. Um, but but yeah. you know, it's going to have to be a bolder move like yeah, that than yeah. just city. And I, I appreciate what Minneapolis is doing. I appreciate what New York's doing. You know, um, well, they can be like a lot of these things something. happen from small case studies. Like yeah. we talked about last week. Almost all police training comes from those uh, Kansas City. Kansas City. Yeah. I was thinking St. Louis. Those yeah. Kansas City experiments, like yeah. two of them. Mm-hmm. Like we have modeled almost the entire federally, almost all our. Yeah. Well, on a city and, and state level, yeah. but like across the federal spectrum, all these guys are doing this stuff. Yeah. Like we talked That's about North Carolina last week. 400,000 to 800,000 cars. Over the course of seven years. And they found 17 extra gu- 17. illegal guns. I think it was, was it, was it 17 extra or 17 total? I, I don't either remember. Way. Either way. <laughs> like, either way, that's useless. I, I hope yeah. it was 17 hope extra. It was 17. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, so, um, you know, what's interesting is that a lot of these new, a lot of these new ideas aren't actually new. Um, right. And we do have data on on them, we do know that they work because okay. we there are police forces, small police forces, or uh, you know one city yeah. like Minneapolis that are that make that change, mm-hmm. and we can look and say, okay, well, what happened there? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and time after time after time, we see that um, when you align your policing with you know the science, with the way we know society works, yeah. the way we know individual humans work, mm-hmm. then. Um, then we see that positive change. And so... So you're saying these small case studies could end up in more widespread? Um, I'm more of a pessimist than you. <laughs> I think these small case studies will get buried under okay. the weight of um, the, the fear we have of criminals and terrorists. Yeah. But, um, but I, but uh, I think that they are available to us for that. Yeah. Um, like, we already... I, you know... Um, so often 
I see something proposed and the response is, uh, well, that would never work. And it's like, oh, you don't know. We're yeah. already doing it and it yeah. works. We yeah. just need to do it more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you just yeah. need to do it bigger. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I mean, th- that was a big takeaway from the, the Kansas City was that this happened in the single district and it worked. And you might can model it and adjust it to your own community mm-hmm. needs, but we're not ever going to find a one size fits all. Right. And, right. you know, what works in Fenchers County is not going to work in New York City or the Bronx or, yeah. you know, San Francisco. So let's be humble in the, the idea that, yeah, we don't want crime. Crime is historically low, I mean, for the most part. It keeps going down. So let's find ways to, you know, make our law what it's supposed to be, <laughs> uh, ensuring that every person has a right to freedom and happiness mm-hmm. and to explore that and to obtain that for themselves rather than you didn't turn your signal and... The, the judge is in session, so you're going to sit in a jail for three days. Like, that's the most idiotic thing. Yeah. And, the, and uh, going back to, like, the say your name, like, she's dead because of a failed turn signal. Like, these systematic changes need to happen because people are dying because they're yeah. wrong. Yeah. And someone did a bad job, and they hope that it would we'll let her go on Monday. They did the job that they were trained for. Yeah, and we'll hope... She gets out on Monday and, and the problem goes away. We'll say we're sorry, but she ended up killing herself. And, and there was a lot that went into that. But, like, that that, cis, that coupling theory, like, mm-hmm. she wasn't going to kill herself that weekend, yeah. you know. Yeah. If, if she was in her apartment, that wasn't going to happen. Yeah. She did it because she was met with a lot of unforeseen stress that was not her fault. And she was running away from pro- – well, she was trying to restart her life in a new town. And – she meets the same problems she had from there. I think she, she had like 8,000 outstanding dollars worth of tickets yeah. and infractions from the police there. And here she is second day in a new town and the, the system is mm-hmm. cycling here as it, just as it was in her hometown and yeah. she doesn't see a way out. So yeah. yeah, let's, let's fix that to where people are able, she was trying to pursue happiness. Like that was, <laughs> yes. yeah. that's what that's, she, she yeah. that's why she was there. Yeah. From Illinois to Texas, and she couldn't get away from it. So she said, "What's the point?" And yeah. that's just, we got we got to do something. Like we got to keep speaking about it. Like yeah. I'm not a lawmaker; I can't change it, but I can say, "Hey guys, yeah. let's vote on this next time, or let's do something about this next yeah. time." Yeah, and that's I think let's not let this news cycle in before we put in to motion some changes. Yeah, and I like that Minneapolis is doing something. Yeah, there's a lot um, of places doing stuff, and I think that that's just let's, the... let's not pretend it's done though, just because no, they do that. No, 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 we're just getting started. Yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Well, um, James, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now, what if uh, do you do social media? Do you like people to connect with you on social media? Um, I I don't know, like. I really don't care. Okay. Like, people are like, I lost five followers this week. I'm like, how did you know? <laughs> well, uh, but, you know, one of the things we always, we always encourage people, and it's no pressure that you have to, but we encourage people to reach out to us and continue to have this yeah. discussion uh, past our podcast. And so if you'd want people to do that, you could share social media with us. Yeah. And uh, people, people might reach out. Uh, so, like, the best place to engage with me publicly mm-hmm. where I'm – less likely to ignore you is probably Twitter, okay. uh, where I am uh, J-E-G-J-R-X. Okay. Uh, it's my initials, J-E-G Jr. X. Okay. Um, and uh, um, yeah, I guess that's, that's that will probably be it. Um, but feel free to block me <laughs> later. <laughs> that's what I tell. I got like, I got a bunch of new followers. I, well, I, 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 I finally responded to a bunch of like, uh, friend requests on Facebook that have yeah. been stacking up and it's mostly family yeah. but I keep meaning to like put out this post like hey y'all don't feel bad if you have to block me yeah. because <laughs> I like, I'm it. not yeah. putting up <laughs> with your BS yeah. so yeah. You know, yeah. But. yeah well and uh, you, you guys know Curtis and I are always available on yeah. uh, Instagram Be Good People Show yeah. over and you on guys Facebook can comment here on, yeah. on YouTube if you're yeah. listening to audio uh, you probably don't have that opportunity yeah. but We'll, we'll jump just up on YouTube com- and, uh, and we'll jump in the conversation with you. Send and a we- message there or yeah. whatever it looks like. I mean, this is a big issue that's not going to go away. It hasn't gone away for about 
20 years now, 50 years now. I mean, yep. it just keeps coming around. So yep. all we can do is once it comes back around, we yep. got to take the next step. And, and I think too, I think, and I'm speaking for us here. I think we're going to talk about this again. I'm sure we in will. a few weeks. Yeah. I, I don't think we're going to, I let think it this, go I, I don't even know how long we've been talking, but it's been a while, but yep. like, there's still so much to say. Yep. Like, there, yep. we haven't touched on anything really. Yep. I mean, <laughs> and and I think in future weeks too, I mean, we're having a planning session here while we record, but, yeah. um, I, but I'd, I'd love to look at what are the solutions that are rolling out? Yeah. What, yeah. what are these? Let's, uh, does this look like it's going to win? Should we throw our support voting for candidates that, yeah. that are in favor of that? You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I think we'll talk some of that. Yeah. Um, you can stand behind future. people while also addressing some of the yep. systematic failures yep. are behind them. So, I mean, you don't have to, you know, throw the baby out with the bathwater. We can still respect people. And, and, and let's, let's, we are at this conversation now yep. talking about it, you know, systematically because we read a book. Yep. Like, <laughs> you shared a book with me, yep. and I was apprehensive about it because I know, the, you know, if he thinks this is a good book, maybe, <laughs> is it? I don't know. But it was. And so, like... Yeah. Your friend well, shares you. that book to you, you read it, and be if you're sharing books, be ready to read what is shared to you. You know, yeah. like that's yeah. sometimes these these writers can say things that we're all thinking and we can't put into words and when they spell it out for us, it's like, Oh, you know, I was a little wrong on this, but I was right on here and it makes me see this picture fully rather yeah. than this little block that I was staring at. So do your duty and you know, we, we, we have the right to, uh, we were talking about rights and responsibilities a few episodes back. It's yep. like, yeah, you have the right to have a, a, a free speech, but you have the responsibility to educate yourself. Yep, exactly. So if you're engaging in this conversation, educate make sure yourself. you're doing your homework before yep. it, you know, yeah. rather than I'm going to defend my cousin who's a cop or I'm going to defend my aunt who got shot by, you know, the cops. Like, we've got to come at this intelligently yep. and realize that we're people here in this country together we yep. got to find a way to make this work. we got to find a way to find justice while allowing people to pursue happiness at yep. the same time. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, can I actually, because yeah. I, I want to, like, um, I know we're, we're, you were trying to wrap up, okay. but, uh, um, like, I think that that's a really good point because, I, you know, I'm vocal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I'm often accused of, of hating police. Um, yeah. Which is funny because, like, my brother yeah. is an officer. Yeah. Um, and, well, he's not actually anymore. He's an investigator. Oh, okay. Th like, yeah. he's, uh, and, and uh, like, uh, yeah. yeah. So, but uh, he, or a special agent or something, I don't yeah. know. Uh, so, um, and, and, like, my, this is my brother who... Um, you know, I was homeschooled. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. like, my best friend for, for my entire childhood, yeah. like, we were inseparable mm -hmm. until he up and went to high school or whatever. Yeah. But um, so, like, for the first 17 years of my life, we were the boys. Mm -hmm. We were Matt and Junior. Yeah. We didn't even have names. Right. We yeah, were just yeah. the yeah. boys, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, and I was mad about that then. Yeah. But, uh, but, like, so, like, when I say I I don't hate the police. Yeah. Um, I'm, I yeah. mean, my brother means the whole world to me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I do have concern for his safety, especially yeah, when right. he's making domestic violence calls yeah. and traffic stops, which yeah. are the two most dangerous yeah. things for him. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, but also, I was looking up the stats when we were talking earlier. Uh, this year, so far this year, coronavirus has killed twice as many police officers as intentional gunfire. And, and so like, and, 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 and my old job now is behind a desk. My old job at a, at a warehouse was, has a higher on the job death rate than policing. Because of the coronavirus? Uh, no, no, just, just in, in the, general. Okay. okay. Uh, probably more now, yeah. actually. Uh, but this was, this is, I, I look it up every year. So the last few years, that's been the case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so when we talk about this, it is. It's not like, oh, we just hate hate police and don't care about what they're going through and want to see like, you know, we, it's not a war on cops. Right. Yeah. Like, this is this is also this is this is because, um, and I think this is in the book as well. Like, when 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 we're when we're out there advocating for these changes, 
it is also advocating for those officers. Yeah. Yeah. Because I don't want my brother to respond to domestic violence calls. Yeah. Because he don't know jack about it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, like yeah. I mean, yeah. Like, I mean, like social work, you have to have a four year degree. Right. And why would I expect this guy to do it? Yes. You know, yeah. I would rather have someone, again, not shaming, but like I, I don't ask someone who's not a plumber to come fix my pipes you know it's it's kind of that same thing like yeah let's let's take care of these guys and put them in the best situation to succeed it's, yes I'm, I'm glad i'm glad you said yeah. that because i think that really connects kind of the heart of the discussion we're trying to have is you know most of those guys that are on the streets right now and in, in the police uniforms are are either living paycheck to paycheck or or month to month like the yeah. rest of yeah. us so yeah. we've mm-hmm. we've got to attack the system rather than the people in it because yeah the system ultimately should be there to protect and and benefit all of us yeah. rather than pit us against each other. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I think Absolutely. that's a great point. James, I'm glad you said that. Well, James, I hope you'll join us again sometime maybe. Maybe we can talk you into it again. Um, and I do want to thank uh, Malcolm Gladwell. He was going to be with us for a few yeah. of these, and schedule just didn't work Ooh, out. No, unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure yeah, that was, that's the case. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I guess he, he had to take yeah, his dog the to the... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, to yeah. The, uh, nail clipper. Every uh, single that, week, uh, oddly yeah. enough. Hey, it's, it's weird. But grandma yeah. was sick. Yeah. I think his phone's broke. I haven't heard back. <laughs> yeah. In all the messages. I must be a broken phone. <laughs> <laughs> but, but thank you for joining with us. Uh, engage with us. Um, and we'll see you next week. Yeah, definitely leave a comment and or message us or whatever. Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll talk about something next week. I'm not sure yet. But. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see you. See you. Hey friends, I hope you enjoyed the discussion here. And if you did, go ahead and click that like button. Um, that helps us out. Um, also, if you're not a subscriber, you should be. Um, if, you're, if you subscribe and hit the bell, then you get a notification every time we post new content. That way you can stay up on all the discussions we're having. Um, if this conversation uh, resonated with you, maybe share it with a friend over on social media. And also we've got some other videos, so feel free to check those out um, and join in anywhere.